The women's division had their fun. Now it's time for the men. We'll recap the big numbers of the 2021 Noble CrossFit Games coming up on Inside the Leaderboard. What's up everyone, Tommy Marquez here with another edition of Inside the Leaderboard presented by Thorne. And last week, we went through the superlatives of the women's division at the games this season. And this week, it's the men's turn. We'll start with the legendary career of Scott Panchik, and through his nine games appearances, seven have ended in the top six overall, but the driver of his remarkable consistency has been the 60 top 10 event finishes in his career, and that number excludes the back half of 2019 where there were only 10 athletes. But one thing that has stood out during his tenure was the way he finished competition. You can see his average finish in the final five events across his career, but that finish also includes six finishes of 25th or lower. So if we treat this like my high school math teacher and drop the worst test score each year, that average improves by three full placements, highlighting just how good Scott was in closing events even in the presence of a bad finish here or there. Moving on now, in my recent talks with athletes since the games, there's been some discussion around eras of athletes in the sport. Earlier years, there was Froning, Kalipa, Smith, and in recent years, alongside Matt Fraser, Pat Vellner, Brent Fikowski, and Bjorgman Carl Gudmundsen have established themselves amongst an elite group since 2015. Each has racked up multiple podium finishes, and in fact, 2020 was the only year since 2015 where the men's podium didn't include at least one of these three. They've also consistently stayed inside the top five overall, with BKG doing the best job of keeping things between the buoys in the top 10, even in quote unquote off years. And I wanted to take a quick moment to give BKG his due. An event for this year, he missed out on a chance to wear the white leader's jersey on the floor due to some scoring appeals getting sorted, but we still wanted to give him his due. And finally, Justin Medeiros became the youngest male champion in history as the title changed hands for just the fourth time in the last decade. So naturally, here's how things stacked up with Medeiros and the other three previous champs in their first title run. Everything is done in percentages here to keep things relative and account for different numbers of events and athlete fields. But Medeiros, taking home 82.3% of the points available to him, was second only to Froning in 2011, while both Froning and Fraser had the highest percentage of top five and top 10 finishes, while Medeiros did the best in damage control out of the lot. His worst finish of 15th this year still placed him in the 60th percentile of the field, and overall his numbers stack up nicely historically, which only adds to the excitement for next year. That's gonna do it for this edition of Inside the Leaderboard, presented by Thorne. Our Miles to Madison episodic series, episode one is out now. Be sure to check in for episode two when it drops on August 26th. You can get that on YouTube or on games.crossfit.com. 